What is happening, y'all? Welcome on back. So with Murgo's wet nurse knocked out, uh, quite a few things have changed. Namely, the hunter's dream is on fire, as you can see. Uh, the doll looks like she's down for the count. She does get up. She's not permanently down. Um, but basically, this is pre-end game, and there's quite a few things that we can do now. So we have our ideal farming route is now unlocked. Uh, now is a good time to actually push through all the chalice dungeons, and we can get two of the three endings we need for fighting the final boss. So uh, this is going to kind of be a uh, like almost a closeout episode. We still have the DLC and the chalices to do, but there's a lot of things we can accomplish uh, in terms of working towards our platinum that I want to cover in this episode, as well as um, two of our fights with German. So the first thing I want to point out is with the Murgo dead, you can now, or excuse me, the wet nurse. Actually, Murgo is the baby, which I discovered after that last episode. Uh, but we can buy blood rocks. Blood rocks cost 60 insight, which is obviously quite expensive. Uh, but by using your insight, you can easily pick up another two blood rocks or so. I've already spent enough to get one blood rock. And we've been saving this stuff for the majority of the playthrough. We've only spent it once. So, I mean, right here, this is a quick 50 insight. And then when you add the DLC, that's easily enough for another one. So right there alone, that's two blood rocks via insight that we can acquire. Um, beyond that, the next thing I want to talk about is going to be the farm. Because you can farm um, like 76,000 echoes in like less than a minute at this point in the game. Uh, so one of the first things you're going to want to do is you're going to want to play online and we're going to be talking about false depths. Now I mentioned this earlier but what a false depth is is essentially it's a depth that has been created using a uh, save editor but it allows us to access a chalice dungeon that is significantly later in the game with the base to Marion uh, unlock. So even though this says it's a depth one, this is actually like a depth four, but it'll let us get stuff that we want for loot. So this one in particular, as you can see down in the bottom right, S R I G Z Z 9 M. Punch that code in while you're online, and it will create this dungeon. Uh, one of the the big benefits of false dungeons is we can jump straight into them without materials. Uh, so you can get the high end runes, you can get uh, good blood gems. You can get uncanny and lost versions of weapons, and even though typically stuff that's save edited is uh, very much frowned upon, uh, false dungeons are actually like the opposite. They're very much considered kind of the standard in the Bloodborne community, because especially those of us that want to make multiple builds and get our build set up uh, really fast, you know, no one wants to spend 10 to 15 hours crawling through dungeons to get just one rune. They want that rune fast. Uh, so this one in particular, we are just getting a farming rune. So once you go on in, we're just going to go straight. We're going to open up this, which as you can see has already been opened. Run down here. At this split, go left. Go up these stairs. Pass that guy. As you can see there's a hole in the floor right there. You won't see that hole initially. So just be careful around it. And instead you're going to go left into this room. Turn. And then go up these stairs here. Now, there's a good chance you'll die here, but it's a pretty short run to get back. Um, and what you want to do is run on over here and open up that. And then after you've opened it up, grab the thing out of it. So what's more than likely going to happen is you're going to come in here. You're going to, um, in one attempt, you'll open it. In the second attempt, you'll grab it. You might be able to do a quick loop like that, like I just did, to uh, basically open it and then grab it in the same run. Uh, but don't even worry about killing all these guys. We're not worried about killing these enemies. We strictly came in here uh, just to get the, the rune that we want. And in particular, we came in here to get a tier 3 air rune. Now the tier 3 air rune is the highest tier of air that you can use uh, to get echoes via farming. It is a very big boost to how many echoes you get via farming. And with that rune, we are able to hit the echo boost cap which I'll be talking about in just a second. So I'm not worried about the echoes that I dropped. Uh, but next I'm going to be showing you the farming route along with the farming setup and what you should have on. Now there's lots of reasons to farm. Uh, we need to buy all the weapons in the game for the sake of the Platinum Trophy. You can level up a little bit. Um, by this point in the game, I like getting to around level 100. It just makes everything a little bit more comfortable, kind of fleshing out our stats and whatnot. Uh, but for our farm, you could either go... There's, there's two different setups. You could go air air and moon or you could go triple air but the point is you're going to want the tier 3 air rune the tier 2 air rune and then i like having the tier 3 moon rune 
Um, so this will allow you to hit the maximum uh, scaled percentage of increased echoes. Now before you go far, make sure you have a couple of Bold Hunter's Marks just to make this even faster. As a reminder, you can buy Bold Hunter's Marks right here. They're pretty cheap. You're going to be pulling in a ton of echoes, so these are not going to be a problem. 1,200 echoes a pop. Uh, you're also going to want to have your Augur of Every Itis on. That's going to help out a lot. And we're going to go to the Wet Nurse's Lunarium. Now you're going to need to do this for at least 200,000 echoes just to buy uh, all the weapons that we're going to need. Right now we have access to everything except for two weapons, which we'll be covering those uh, very shortly. But so from here, we're going to run backwards, same way that we came from the boss. Step on the elevator and then walk into the corner. Because we want to send this elevator back up to speed up our farming time. So after it lands, make sure you walk over that dot. A little circle, send it back. And you're just going to run past these guys, ignore them. They will de-aggro, they won't bother chasing you. And what's great about coming this way is you go right up behind these two pigs. So it's just one, two, three, very clean kills. And all we got to do is run behind piggy one, auger, get a visceral. And you might need to do a single attack if it doesn't die instantly. 25,798 Echoes. Um, even with the DLC, I don't actually believe there is a spot for better farming than this. Uh, this is just a very, very good spot. Especially because we have spent three bullets and a single bold hunter's mark. And in exchange for that, we have snatched up 77,000 Echoes and six Blood Vials. So, very, very nice farm here. You know, that was super fast. Um, I didn't look at the time, but I would I would put that at, what, 90 seconds, two minutes, maybe, when you include all the warping and whatnot. Um, but so, you're going to want to do that for a bit. You're going to want to farm on up. Uh, just to, to touch base real fast on the... A hunter weapons trophy you should have the hunter's tool trophy but for the hunter weapons trophy you need to have access to every weapon in the right hand and in the left hand category so some of these we already have like the saw cleaver uh, i think we actually have the saw spear as well in the stash but so basically just go here and buy up stuff hunter axe that came blade of mercy kirk hammer we already have that we already have a rider palish buy a chicago stake driver we already have tenitris and spear like Arius wheel um, buy all these as well and then um in addition to those, there are two that we're missing. We have the Beast Claw, which we are going to get in another False Depth. And we also have the Burial Blade, which we're going to get from Gurman. Um, in addition, you should have gotten them if you were following along with the walkthrough. Uh, but the Torch and Wooden Shield, you should already have these right here in your stash. And with all of those, you should be able to get what you need. Um, now... Gamino. Garmin awaits as always. I'm gonna take this and pump it up. Pump up health. I'm gonna buy some echoes. And next up on our list, we have Garmin. Now, before you go and fight Garmin, you want to back up your save. But she's gonna tell you Garmin awaits. We need to go through here and talk to him. But before we do that, go here, exit game, and return to title menu. After you've done that, hop on over to your dashboard. This is going to vary between the PS4 and PS5, but the general process is the same. You want to go into Settings, Save Data. You would select your save. If you're on the PS5, you need to go to Save Data PS4, go to Console Storage, and then either upload it to the cloud or copy it to a USB drive. If you're copying it to a USB drive, it needs to be formatted for your PlayStation, so you'll need access uh, to either a PC or a laptop. I think the PS4 can actually format USB drives. I haven't been able to do it with the PS5 yet. Uh, but go on ahead and copy that over. Of course, if you have PS Plus, you can just copy it to the cloud as well. Uh, when you copy it to the cloud, it should also uh, back stuff up automatically. So let's go ahead and put this on over to the cloud. As you can see, the time is, is uh, pretty close already. Um, and you can enable or disable auto upload as needed. So actually, I'm going to go ahead and turn that on for everything. So I still have it off for Neo? Yeah, we can turn you back on now, Neo. You're good. Okay. 
uh, after you have uploaded it to the cloud, now we are going to go after German for a couple kills. I'm going to kill him twice in particular. As a reminder, you're going to need to be in online mode to use that Chalice Dungeon code. Okay, so now that we are spawned in, we're going to head on over to German. Get ready to ready for the actual fight. And you're going to talk to him. He's going to say, your night's near your end. I'll show you mercy. I'll wake you up from this terrible dream. And then you're going to actually select submit your life. Now this is going to get you ending number one. Uh, with that particular ending, you basically wake up and this was all just a really bad nightmare. Now after getting that, and this is why we backed up our save, you need three endings for Bloodborne, but you can save scum all three. Just bam, bam, bam. Uh, and similar to before, you would go to settings. After doing the, the refuse and getting that ending, once the trophy pops, go to save data. Go on over to where you had your save data and copy it to the console storage. So we'd grab it, we'd hit copy, it would close Bloodborne. And by doing that, it would put us right back to where we were uh, before we uh, talked to Germain. Now, we're going to assume you did that. I'm not going to go through it just to save some time here. But after doing that, next up, you would select Refuse. And with the Refuse, you're actually going to have to fight Germain. Uh, now, this is a very challenging fight, easily one of the hardest fights in the game. Germain is not easy to kill. Uh, I would suggest fighting him with the weapon in one-handed form. I'd suggest having some type of buff, and I'd suggest having your pistol ready to try and get uh, parries off on him. Trying to get parries with the auger is very hard. Oh my god, I just realized I didn't actually change out my, uh, my runes at all. Yeah, we can just <laughs> we can just go ahead and die. We can go ahead and die. I uh, I that was a that was a rather big mistake. And they're like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Forgot one of the most important steps. Okay, um, so for him, we are gonna go... Actually, I'm gonna go damage. We're gonna go claw mark. We'll go claw mark, uh, blood rupture, and then... 15% stamina on hunter. Uh, so this is the level 3 claw mark. 30% uh, versus 20%. You won't have found this yet, but just like we used a, uh thing over here to get the air rune. You can get that with a false dungeon. So just you know, go on the interwebs and, and search up uh, claw mark level 3 false depth. We'll find one. I got my stamina and I'm actually set up. And, uh, fighting him with the farming runes. Not ideal. A big part of this fight is aggression. You don't want to let him come up on you. Oh, because see, he does that. All right, you need to. That's the one attack that always gets me. I always try to, to parry it. I don't even know if I can, but I, I end up getting hit by it. Starts doing this, try and do as much damage as you can. This is him activating his uh, Ultra Instinct mode. I'll also do a big explosion in a second. And it looks like he's getting ready for the explosion. Same as before, we're gonna get in as much damage as we can. Because the explosion is pretty hard to outrange. 
Oh no. Please stop it, Mr. Anime. It's also very hard to get a uh, proper interrupt on him once he is glowing like this. There we go. So after you go ahead and beat German, you will get the badge, you'll get a bunch of echoes, and then a cutscene will trigger. Go through the cutscene and you will get another ending. Now the big thing that comes down from the cutscene, that is the moon presence. And that's the real final boss of the game. We're not going to beat it just yet, but we are going to unlock access to it. But now what we have to do, having taken down German. Good. All right, by this point your trophy should have popped up. And the same as before, we're going to hop on over. We're going to go to settings. We are going to go down to save data. We're going to go to our USB drive and we're going to copy it over. So at this point, you should have uh, two of the ending trophies. You should have the trophy for uh, the regular German ending, and you should have the trophy for the uh, Submit Your Life ending. The third and final ending for the game involves beating the Moon Presence. Now, we aren't actually going to kill Moon Presence just yet, but we are going to go through the steps to trigger that ending now, in addition to picking up the badge from German so that you can get the weapon that you need to get the all weapons trophy. All right, so now that we are in, um, first thing we need to do here is let me go put back on those runes. I should have backed up having those runes on already. Unfortunately, I did not do that. Kind of a dumb mistake in retrospect. Uh, we're gonna go back to, what was it? Rapture, Rapture, Claw Mark, and then uh, Clockwise. And perhaps the most important thing to do before you go fight Garmin this time is we need to eat the one-third umbilical cords. Now these are, uh, each of these is one-third of the umbilical cord from the baby old one. Uh, by eating the three of these, when the moon presence comes down, it basically like recognizes us as a baby old one, but at the same time it notices that we're like a human. And so it rejects us and decides to battle us because uh, it realizes that we, in a sense, like defiled its offspring, I guess is one way to describe it. Uh, so anyway, eat three of those. And now while the fight against German will be the same, the results after the fight will not. Let's go ahead and whack him. Oh, I got the... Come on. Come on, Gurmy. Alright, this is not, not the smoothest start. I swear to God, I'm hitting my, my gun, but I'm just not getting parries off. Stop trying to... Every time he tries to do that, like, neck grab, I keep trying to parry it. And I should just be dodging it and hitting it.
no, oh no. Am I dead? No, I'm not. It was close though. Watch out for the tornado. Damn, the tornado still hit me. So anyway, I'm gonna I am gonna show this one cutscene just because it's one of the more iconic cutscenes in Bloodborne. But we'll get the old hunter badge, the cutscene will play similar to before. Moon presence will come on down out of the sky. Which moon presence is actually a really hard fight. Your guy approaches it like, oh my god, that's an old one. And it's gonna go to embrace you similar to before. But when you get close, it realizes, wait! What the fuck is this? You ate the umbilical cord of my baby! Or something like that. I don't, anyway, it gets real angry, and what you're gonna do is either use a bold hunter's mark to try and warp out, or just die. Uh, it doesn't matter. The point here is to leave. Because uh, when we kill Moon Presence, while we are gonna get the third and final trophy, uh, the game will also auto-roll to credits and New Game Plus begins. But, we still wanted to beat Germain here, because now, under purchase items, we can now pick up the Burial Blade. Which, with having acquired the Burial Blade, there is only one other weapon that you need for your Weapons Trophy. And that weapon is going to be in a False Depth, which is right on over here. Um, now, actually, I am going to try and... Alright, let's try and fit this in now. I think we can fit this in, in one episode. Um, so anyway, the code C76P8SBE. Pop that on open. And this is an ailing Lauren chalice, which typically you wouldn't get to for quite a while. But this will uh, this will be a fight against a super beastie thing, and after beating super beastie thing, it'll be all set. Uh, so let's see, we want to run ahead, I've already taken notes, uh, skip the side room, run all the way until we reach a really big room. Get this. And there's going to be a ladder in the far back corner of the room. Got a seat over there. Then we're going to follow this path around and it'll bring us to the lock uh, for this chalice. Um, there we go. Down this way. ladies. We're so doing all that. Hit this. And then after getting that open, um, let's see, you sir, don't let him grab you. I didn't write how to exit this damn place. Well, it should be, uh, like, right on over this way, more than likely. Down, yes. And right on over here, I believe. There it is. Alright, now, actually, I don't know, what is my durability at? Can I get through this fight? 70? I can probably get through this fight. Um, so for this beast, you're going to want to have fire on, 
Uh, having a serrated weapon would actually be pretty good here. Like the one I'm using, except I don't have the right decorations to actually make this viable. So instead, we're just going to work uh, with our Ludwig Holy Blade and use fire. Um, this thing is basically just a super beast. Uh, the fight can be pretty challenging. So if you're unable to beat this right now, don't feel bad. You can just always come back and do it at a later time. Likes to throw fire, even though it is fire. It has this like scoot back that you're just, ah, 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 scoot back that you're seeing. I might have to go one-handed here. Ooh, yeah, as you can see, big, big bite coming in from the sky. And if you look carefully, you'll notice this is the same as that beast that we found uh, when we dropped all the way down the big hole and picked up our, uh, our thingies for the first time. Or, uh, one of our first rooms when we like, dropped all the way down uh, in the hole that's below where we got our current weapon. So just doing that brought it down to 62. I'm, I'm going to go. I don't know if at risk impact. So I'm going to try and go repair this. So I don't think I have anything I can. I do not. But I do have lots of these. Uh, you can also sell your chalice materials for echoes unless you are planning on uh, going through chalices the legit way those are no longer going to be concerns for you you know what i don't know if i can visceral this thing i'd assume i could visceral this thing but i didn't actually try i also didn't try um blood cocktails but it may actually put them in a corner i didn't test that at all But right when we kill this guy, the room just past him will have the Beast Claw. Which is what we need to get the final... Uh, it's the final weapon we need for the All Weapons Trophy. Now obviously when you warp back in, it's going to be uh, pretty easy here. We're able to just straight across, make a turn. Uh, you don't got to worry about all that extra stuff. I'm going to pop this, and we're going to try the blood cocktail and see what happens. Looks like the pungent blood cocktail strategy will work. that I really uh, trivialized that encounter I actually this was a pretty hard fight on the walkthrough prep it took it took quite a few attempts to take that baddie down which makes me feel even better that I found a, a new strat so you can hit that lamp if you want but it doesn't matter uh, we're just gonna take this elevator on down and then there's gonna be a bonus room right here Alright, and we're going to run past all the rats that we see here. Just run on past, ignore the rats. We want to do this uh, till there's a small room with a ladder. There we go, here's our ladder. We're going to take the ladder up. And then we want to go ahead and cross the bridge here. And grab these if you want. Pop open this. And we'll open this chest. And we 
now have the Beast Paw. So with that, go ahead and warp on out, and if you have already gone through and farmed up all of your Echoes, after obtaining this, you should get your trophy for having all the weapons in Bloodborne. Um, so on that note, we are going to wrap things up. Uh, in terms of main game content, the only thing left is one more Chalice, which is very, very hard, so we're going to save that for post-DLC. And of course, killing the Moon Presence, which if we were to go and do that right now, we would be uh, in New Game Plus, which we don't want. So uh, instead, in the next episode, we're going to be starting the DLC. As a reminder, if you are missing any weapon, if you can't figure out what you're missing, just go here, go down the list, make sure you buy everything. I mean, if you want to be safe, just farm up and then be like, buy, 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 and just make sure you buy every single thing one time. Uh, but either way, wrap it on up, and I will catch you soon enough as we dive into the DLC Old Hunters.